Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. In this video I'm going to take you through how to configure homing on Masso. So you'll notice at the end of the homing sequence the machine was able to locate the touch off plate and touch the tool off on it. This is a very useful feature to have. Other uses of homing is the ability to find a tool changer, locate fixtures on your table, as well as being able to use it to recover position should you lose it while machining. So next we're going to take a look at what we require to set up our homing. So when it comes to setting up homing, you need to install switches on your machine. They can be like these here, mechanical switches, or something like these, proximity switches. When these here come within 4 millimeters of a piece of metal, they signal Masso to let it know that it's reached the home position. You can use optical switches or even magnetic switches. The important thing is no matter what type of switch you use, when the input is triggered, Masso changes from a low state to a high. You got your homing switches installed and you're rearing to go, but hold on a minute. There's some changes I want to make to the program first that are not specifically related to homing, but at the end of the day, we'll make things a bit easier. And I'm also going to offer you a piece of advice. I'm going to be using a slow, methodical method of getting homing up and running. And I recommend that this is the way you do it. Trying to do everything at once and making random settings all over the place will only lead to major problems later on. Diagnosing what's gone wrong will become far more difficult. So if you do it one axis at a time, test that as you go. Once you finish that axis, test, make sure that's working, then move on to the next one. You're going to find things will be a lot quicker in the long run. It's the tortoise and the hare. Okay, well, let's get on with it. The first change I'm going to make is by going into the x-axis settings and I'm going to alter my travel minimum and travel maximum. This is going to eliminate any possibility of running into issues while jogging around the table. The longest axis on my machine is 1 meter or 1000 millimeters long. I'm going to change the minimum travel to minus 3000 millimeters and the travel maximum to 3000 millimeters. Note that the maximum value should always be larger than the minimum. I'm going to go to the Y and Z axis and make the same changes to the settings there. Now you might ask, why don't I just go to General Settings and put a check in the Disable Soft Limits box. Unfortunately, disabling the soft limits only disables it while you're running your G-code file. You are still bound by the soft limit settings when jogging around the table. So to get around this, I'm simply making them very large figures. Lastly, I'm going to go into the homing screen and remove all checks from the sequence. So I'm going to remove the Z, X and Y from this here, leaving the sequence table blank. Congratulations, you've just completed the first and simplest homing scenario there is. That's where you don't install homing switches on your machine. You manually position your X and Y axis either by pushing and pulling it into position or by using a pendant to jog it to where you want. And then you use your control alt home keys on the keyboard to home the machine. And that will set your axes all back to zero. So let me demonstrate on mine. I can disengage the motors. Because mine's rack and pinion, I can simply push and pull it where I like. For the z-axis, I could use my pendant and drive the axis a bit higher. Now I can go to my keyboard, go Control, Alt, Home. And that now sets all my axes to machine coordinates zero. The advantage of that is the machine knows exactly where it is. It can now find this tool touch-off plate. So I'll be able to use the auto tool change feature and it'll be able to find any fixtures and I can also use my soft limits. But of course that's not why we came here, we want to set up 
our sensors and get it homing. But there's one more thing we need to check because I've been caught with this one before. So this is a wee problem that strikes new builders where they've gone through, set up the machine, but have never cut anything with it. They haven't checked exactly which direction their motors are running, and one of them is running backwards. If you go through, set up your homing, you end up inverting which direction of travel the homing works. Sooner or later, you're going to have to come back, you'll fix this axis, and now you'll find your homing's running backwards. So the first trick is to check that your axes are homing in the right direction. So the easiest way of doing that is to simply grab your pendant and just simply move each axis so that you're somewhere on your table there and have got a bit of room to move. Now they've got it in clear area I'm just going to go through and zero out my axes. With that done, I can now go to MDI. And I can just enter some simple commands. So Z is currently a zero, so if I go Z20, it should raise up 20 millimeters. Excellent. The X has moved up, so we know we're good on that one. Let's check the X. We'll go X uh, 200, it should move this way 200. Ah, there you go, it's moving backwards. I'm going to go into the F1 setup, look at the X axis, and I'm going to uncheck invert direction and save. I'm going to zero out my Z axis again, I'm going to type in Z 200. Ah, this time it's moving in the right direction. Excellent. Let's try the Y. Y is currently zero. I'm going to go Y 200. It should move 200 millimeters away from me, which it does. So all our axes are now moving in the correct directions. So now we can finally move on to setting up our first homing switch. So the first axis we're going to set up is the Z axis. It's also the most logical one because whenever you're homing your machine you should always lift the cutter up as high as it will go so that it doesn't run into anything when it does the X and Y. Now unfortunately I've forgotten which input I connected my sensor to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this screwdriver, put it against the sensor and we'll see what input on the F1 screen changes to high. In this case it's input 6. So now we know which input it is, we can configure it up. To configure the sensor, we're going to select our input number 6. We double click on it to open a list of functions we can assign. And we're going to look for the Z Home Sensor input. We double click on it and that will assign it to our input. Next we go to our homing screen. And under sequence 1, we put a check in the z-axis. We then go down to pull-off distance, and I'm going to enter a value of 1 millimeter. Click the Save button, and now our z-axis homing is configured and ready for testing. Well, now it's time for the exciting bit, testing the homing of our first axis. What should happen is once we start the homing, the z-axis should rise up until it gets to that sensor, at which point in time it should stop, and then back off that sensor, moving uh, downwards by one millimeter. Now to start the homing, I can either go Control-Alt-Home, or from the jog screen, I can press and hold the home button for three seconds. I'm just going to go Control-Alt-Home here. Perfect, that's exactly what it should have done. Because we've got no other axes ticked, it only homes the Y. And with that done, we can now move on to the X axis. So I've got the same problem I had before. I can't remember which input I connected my sensor to. So we're going to use the uh, screwdriver to trip the sensor. Ah, and I can see it's on input 5 from the F1 screen. Okay, well now we can go through the process and set up this one.
I select my input 5 and double click on it to open the select function. I find the X home sensor input and double click on that to assign it to input 5. I can then go to the homing screen and put a check mark under sequence 2 for the X axis. I click save and that's my homing sensor configured. And now it's time to give it a test. This time it should rehome the Z axis then move across and home to the X. So we go control alt home. There's the X. Oh, and there's a problem there. Our X axis is moving in the wrong direction. We need to go back in to the Z axis setting and invert it. Change direction that the axis moves when it's homing. Simply put a check in the direction invert box of the appropriate axis. Okay, with that, let's give it another try. Control Alt Home. Z axis, that's better. It's moving in the right direction. When it gets to the end, it should stop and back off a millimeter. Perfect. Okay, so now the trouble really starts. I'm going to do the Y axis, and it consists of two motors uh, the Y and the B. Or is that the Y and that the B? I actually don't know. It was so long ago I wired this up, I can't remember. So I need to come up with a simple way of checking it. So I'm going to go into my settings, I'm going to go to the B axis, and I'm just going to remove the slaving for the B axis. Now, the two motors are completely separate, so I can go back into the jogging screen, and I can set my pendant to Y, and yes, this motor is now moving, and that one isn't, so if I set that to B, yes, now this side's moving, and that isn't. So that's the B axis, that's the Y, so that's the Y sensor, and that's the B sensor. Before I do anything else, I'm going to go back in and slave them together again so that they both work. That's good. And uh, now I can go about identifying which inputs uh, my Y axis and which input is my B axis and just configure them up. Exactly the same process we had before when we were doing the Z and the X. So with my trusty screwdriver I can see that the Y axis is input 8 and my B is input 7. So let's go in here, input 7, set that to B, input 8, set that to Y. Go into the homing screen, put a check on sequence 3 to home the Y axis. Go save, and that's it. We're ready to give it a test. Right, control alt home, let's see what happens. Z, X, damn thing's moving backwards. If it does that, just push the stop cycle stop key and it'll stop moving. Uh, I'm just going to go into the homing screen and just invert my Y direction, just like I did with the X. Uh, let's give it another go. Control Alt Home X. So there's something wrong there. What did I do wrong? I inverted the Y axis completely forgot to invert the B axis because when you're homing them the two things are separate so I'm just going to go into homing again and I'm going to invert the B axis save that should be a lot happier this time control alt home X uh, ZX oh and there we are the Y and the B are driving together Okay, well before we go, just a couple of last things. First, sensor placement. It's normal to put the sensors on the end of the axes, and they work really well there. Combine that with uh, soft limits, and 
everything will work really well. But you could also consider attaching it to the axes here and uh, put the triggers for it at either end of the axes. That way, this can pull double duty. It can be used as the homing sensor and also as a hard limit at each end of your axes. It's just a thought. Next, homing speed. Under the homing settings, there's a homing speed. And it's quite important to get that right. You don't want it too slow, it'll just take forever to do the homing, but you don't want it too fast, that's worse. Depending on the speed at which you come into the sensor, it will determine how far it passes the sensor once it's been triggered. So the axis comes in as soon as the sensor triggers, it will then start to decelerate the, the uh, axis. And if it passes the trigger point by more than 10 millimeters, that's going to be a problem because Masso only backs the axis off 10 millimeters, and if it can't clear the uh, trigger on it in that time, you'll get a homing alarm. Even worse, you're coming in really hot, you can actually pass the sensor and come out the other side, removing the trigger from it. At that point, it's not going to back it off at all because it's already cleared the sensor and it's not going to be able to come back on the other side. You'll end up getting alarms when you try and cross the sensor if you've got hard limits turned on. So homing speed is important. You don't want it too slow, but you definitely don't want it too fast. Now another issue that people run into is sometimes they home the X, Y, and Z, and then the axis just sits there saying it's homing and nothing's happened. What's going on there is you've turned on the Auto Tool Zero feature, but you haven't assigned a tool setter input. If uh, that's the case, just simply turn off the tool setter, uh, the, the Auto Tool Zero, or assign an input and uh, attach some sort of a probing plate. We'll cover the setup of that in another episode, but it's important to note if you're home in the X, Y, and Z, and it just suddenly sits there and does nothing, just check it because you'll have turned on that auto tool zero. Now, it's important to also note that a probing input is not the same as a tool setter input. For the auto tool zero to work, you must have the tool setter input. And that about wraps it up for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe learned something new. All that remains for me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you later. Cheers. Oh, uh, by the way, we'll cover setting uh, soft limits in another episode. Cheers.